for the sound and light notes, what I do is I go through and remind them what sound and light are and what types of wave they, waves they are. So that's what this first box is for here. So before we talked about longitudinal and transverse waves, um, and so they should know that sound is a longitudinal wave and light is a transverse wave. So I talk to them about that. Um, I also talk about how sound moves through the air and that it's really vibrating the particles um, in the air. That's how the sound gets to you. And I also talk about light, how um, light can move through some things but may not be able to move through others depending on the type of material that it is. Next I go through amplitude and I have the students tell me what the definitions are for these sections on amplitude, frequency, wavelength, and speed first because they should know all of those definitions so I ask for a volunteer to tell me those definitions and then um, I draw them a picture of what the sound might look like. Now I tell them that this is not, sound is not a transverse wave, but it's a lot easier to see the different um, properties like amplitude and frequency and wavelength with a transverse wave. So I remind them sound is not a transverse wave. I'm just using it because it's easier for us to see. So um, we go over that sound is related to loudness, and so a smaller amplitude would mean soft, larger amplitude would mean loud. And then we do the same thing over with light and related to intensity and brightness. We continue on with frequency, and frequency is related to pitch for sound, and it's related to the color that we see for light in the visible spectrum. So after we talk about frequency, we focus on the relationship between wavelength and frequency. So. I asked them to share with a partner um, which one they think has a smaller wavelength um, and then we share out. Um, after I look at we look at the sound, we look at the light and so I write down violet and red and I ask them which one they think has a longer wavelength and so that requires them to look at what the frequencies are up here and then uh, Remember that their in frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, so they figure out that red has the longer wavelength. Then I go through um, how speed is affected, how light has the same speed, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, but the speed of sound depends on um, the material that it's in. So I have them predict what they th which one they think um, is going to travel faster, sound in air and sound in water. Most students say sound in water is going to travel slower, um, and that's kind of a misconception that I want to pull out here, so I make sure to tell them that the sound speed of sound in water is actually faster because it's a liquid, so the particles are actually closer together. After we talk about speed, I tell them that some um, that light can be a wave or a particle, but sound can only be a wave. This final box they will fill out after they go through the different characteristics and phenomena and um, identify which ones apply to sound and which ones apply to light. So this is how I, a general idea of how I go through the sound and light notes. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes um, to get through all of them with the questions in between.